Hey everyone, welcome back to Study OT with Sophie. This week's topic is very important for us clinicians and students, as well as fieldwork students, to learn safety precautions because it comes in different settings and you need to know them in different settings, uh, such as skilled nursing facilities, home care, early intervention, and other settings that may come by you know, different types of safety awareness. We as clinicians will benefit a lot from this video and it will help other people who are interested in learning about the hospital setting, the nursing home setting, safety precautions, or being in a medical field in general. This week's topic is on precautions. There are various precautions that we as clinicians can come across when working in many different settings, as I mentioned earlier. Here is a standard precaution that applies in hospital settings, nursing home settings, and other inpatient facilities. What do you do when you come in contact with someone who has blood or bodily fluids? You basically have to follow the guidelines by applying personal protective equipment to help the therapist prevent any bodily fluids going onto their body or exposing them to any kind of conditions. In this case, you will apply the gown, mask, and gloves first before getting in contact with the patient. Before you leave the patient's room, you take off your PPE as follows in this order, gloves, gown, and mask. Before I continue, the reason why I have the red marks is to give you hints. For instance, for donning on PPE, it would be GMG, gown, mask, gloves, right? And then donning off PPE follows, which would be gloves, gown, mask, so it will be GGM. Before you leave the patient's room, make sure you wash your hands for 20 seconds by singing happy birthday and wiping down your hands really dry before you know, you leave the room as well. It's really important and vital to keep yourself protected as well as other patients. You don't want to have other patients get sick because you haven't properly washed your hands or put on the PPE accordingly. What are some transmission-based precautions? Usually that happens when you come in contact with someone with MRSA and C. diff. You wear protective gear, such as gown and gloves. So in that case, usually before you enter the room, there's always a sign, which I will show you later on, that says caution or stop. Visitors must see a nurse for information before entering the room, or even for therapists and medical professionals. They must, 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 must follow those guidelines in order to prevent anything being transmitted to other people. So before you enter the room, it's very important to wash your hands for 20 seconds, and then put on the gown as well as gloves. Before you leave the room, it's important to dispose the gloves. There's a special bin that they usually place for you know, contaminated gloves and gowns and other wear that is not supposed to be placed in the regular garbage can by disposing it in like a red garbage can. They have this small garbage bin that you place it in. When you dispose of the gloves, make sure you roll them out nicely so the outer part of the gloves doesn't touch your hands. And you wash your hands as well as dispose the gown right after. The order here is different, but in the case of when you work in the nursing home and they have this kind of you know stop sign where it says you're supposed to follow along all these processes, you're supposed to take off your gloves first then gown, and then wash your hands for 20 seconds, and then you leave the room. Make sure you follow the precautions because it's very important to keep yourself protected. Droplet precautions is something we've been very wary of during COVID, and you might have seen it in the nursing home or hospital setting where you need to wear masks at all times, sometimes double masks, triple masks, depending on what setting you're working in. Sometimes they ask you to wear N95 
the blue mask. So in the case of this, usually there's a stop sign as well with, you know, visitors and others before they enter the room, they must speak to the nurse to see what's going on and what the patient may have. So in this case, we know that it's respiratory infections such as TB, pneumonia, influenza virus, and other respiratory factors such as COVID-19. What do you do in this case? You wear uh, the gown first, gloves, and then mask. Before you leave the room, you need to take off the mask, the gown, and then the gloves. Also, in this case, you don't treat the patient out of the room, only in the room by himself without having any other patients. Usually these kind of patients are given a room without having double beds, just one bed, which is also called a private room. They need to be isolated in order not to get anyone else sick because it is very contagious by breathing in the same air. And if they cough, that may also get the other person really sick. That's why it's very important to wear a mask. If there is enough masks in the nursing home or hospital, I suggest changing masks so that way you don't contaminate other patients with this condition. Um, it's also important to keep yourself safe. Always change masks in between people or patients who may have droplet precautions. Lastly, don't forget to always clean the equipment. You don't want it to be you know, contaminated for the next client or patient. Airborne precautions, something you must watch out for is measles, chicken pox, and TB, tuberculosis. What do you usually do with this kind of patient? You work with them in the room. You must be isolated from other patients. And sometimes what happens is some patients have like a plastic shower curtain in front of their door as a safety precaution for other staff members or patients from entering that room. The client will be in airborne infection isolation room or monitored negative pressure room. What is the personal protective gear that the medical professional or OT wears? They wear a gown first, gloves, and proper fitting mask. Make sure that when you are in the patient's room, you're wearing a mask that's fully covering your nose and mouth. If you don't have a mask that's properly covering your mouth or nose, then there is a chance that you may get any of these conditions and you may have to take days off from work. So be wary of that. Here is a picture of how the hallway looks before you enter the patient's room. There's usually a droplet precaution and a sign where it shows like, you know, what you're supposed to do before you see the patient, you're supposed to wash your hands. Before and after leaving the room, it's very important to wash your hands for 20 seconds, as well as wear a mask. And it's vital to wear a face protective mask for people with COVID. Um, as you can see here, it says contact precautions. Everyone must have gloves, gown, and wash their hands while in the room. It is very important to take off the gloves before you take off the gown. On the side, you usually see a little small bin with different things that you need to wear before you get into the room. Like for example, on the first shelf, there is gowns, different sizes for the OT to wear. On the second shelf, there is multiple different masks that you can wear before you enter the patient's room. And there's gloves on the third shelf for the therapist to wear. It's always important to dispose all of these items before seeing other patients. I've recently changed my YouTube channel from Study OT with Sophie to OT Sophie to help other OT professionals, students, and fieldwork students to have an easier access and you know improve their knowledge in OT or if they need to review something, they, can, they always have a chance to look up OT Sophie. The purpose of my YouTube channel is to help others in this profession excel and have an easier time accessing YouTube in case they need to look up information. I'm very happy that I've started doing this YouTube channel and I would like to add more information to my next few videos that I have up and coming. But in the meantime, I will be going through a 
minor construction um, with my YouTube video because I need to do some tweaking and change my site up a little bit. Also working on a few other minor changes to follow soon, can't really bring it up now. Please be sure to subscribe, share, comment, and like my videos, um, as well as follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of videos on PEDS information and um, my Facebook community page, which is about having all occupational therapists, quotas, and um, students exchange information on what they're going through in their journey of OT as a student or professional, jobs, uh, how to write resumes. It's going to be the next thing that I'll be working on. And hopefully there will be more for our profession to excel. Thank you so much for being my subscriber and always commenting. I'm actually paying attention to those comments. Here is a video I would like you to enjoy. Please don't tell the supervisor I have the flu. I've been working with a shattered pelvis for three weeks. <laughs> oh, my juice loosener's never gonna come. Hey, Dad, this came for you in the mail. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, comment, and share with others who may benefit from this video. Take care. Have a great day.